live NFL trivia every Wednesday night on Twitch at 9 p.m. Eastern. Come show off your football knowledge for a chance to win cash prizes. Check the link in the description to find out more. And now, on with our feature presentation. Think of the typical schedule for a team that has to fly to a game. You'll usually fly out the day before the game, have the team stay at a hotel that night, and then go through your usual away game routine, such as team meals, team meetings, maybe a walkthrough if the game is super late at night, and then the game itself. It makes complete sense as to why an away team would want to arrive at the home team's city and appropriate facilities the day before the game. It gives them a chance to get adjusted if necessary. It takes any unexpected factors, such as poor weather or mechanical failure with the plane, into account by giving some buffer room. It allows you to feel well-rested and not completely exhausted. Because most of us know the feeling of stepping off of a plane and being tired beyond belief, especially after dealing with a long and sometimes frustrating day at the airport. There is a reason that this is done in college football to give their team the best chance to win. And there is a reason the wheel hasn't been reinvented. However, this is North Texas head coach Daryl Dickey. And in 2004, he had a bold strategy for the Mean Green that basically took conventional logic and threw it out the window. Because prior to the team's biggest game of the season, in front of a national television audience, he decided that his team was going to fly out the day of the game and was only going to arrive in Lafayette to take on the school then known as Louisiana Lafayette a mere hour or two before kickoff. They were going to arrive late in the afternoon, with the game being that night. And the crazy part is that as crazy and as risky as this strategy may have been, at the end of the day, somehow, it actually worked. This is the story behind what has to be the craziest pregame strategy in the over 100 plus year history of the North Texas football program. Before I talk about the actual strategy in question and why Coach Dickey decided to do this in the first place, we need some context to understand just how North Texas was playing this season, as well as the importance of this game against Louisiana Lafayette that Coach Dickey was so worried about. Entering the 2004 season, the expectations for North Texas were extremely high. They had won the Sun Belt in each of the previous three seasons, and were coming off of an incredible 2003 season where they went 9-4, which was the first time since all the way back in 1978 when they were an independent that they won nine games in a season. This was a team that was nothing short of dominant under Coach Dickey in conference play. The team won five straight games in Sun Belt play to close out the 2001 regular season, then went 6-0 in 2002, and went 7-0 in 2003 meaning that entering 2004, they had won 18 consecutive games in conference play. They were running through the Sun Belt at will, with no one being able to stop them. However, the 2004 season got off to a horrible start both on and off the field. On the field, they lost all four of their non-conference games, starting 0-4, with one of them being a blowout 65-0 loss against Texas, where they got outgained 673-130 to in total yardage, and got outgained 29-4 in first downs. It was the most points that the Mean Green allowed in the game since a 1993 loss against Nebraska, when they allowed 76. But off the field, the unspeakable happened when less than one month before opening day, Andrew Smith, a quarterback who threw eight touchdowns in his first two seasons, died at the age of 21. He was killed in an automobile accident after returning to campus from his home in Bay City, and after colliding with another vehicle on Highway 6. It was absolutely tragic, and North Texas was playing the season in honor of their fallen teammate. And despite the incredibly rocky start to the season, both on and off the field, North Texas recovered nicely, because once Sunbelt play started, they continued to destroy the competition and show why they were one of the favorites to win the conference. Led by an offense featuring one of the most electrifying players in all of college football in running back Jamario Thomas, who was a freshman that wound up finishing the season with 17 rushing touchdowns, over 1,800 rushing yards, and accolades including the Sunbelt Offensive Player of the Year and the Sunbelt Player of the Year, the Mean Green began to turn things around, and entering their game against Louisiana Lafayette had won four straight, with three of those wins being by multiple possessions, and with all four of those wins featuring the team scoring at least 30 points and putting their offense on display. This was an absolutely monumental game on the road against Louisiana Lafayette for a few reasons. Number one, a win by North Texas would give them a winning record on the season for the first time, and would put them well above 500, making the chances that they'd be bowl eligible all but certain. Number two, a win here would make it an astonishing 23 consecutive wins in conference play, keeping one of the most impressive active streaks in college football at the time still alive. Number three, Louisiana Lafayette entered this game at 3-2 in conference play, so if North Texas fell, 
then the door was wide open for the Sunbelt title. But perhaps the biggest reason in the grand scheme of things was number four, and that was the fact that this was a nationally televised game. This game was being played on a Friday night, as it was going to air on ESPN2 at 9 o'clock. And North Texas didn't exactly get a whole lot of opportunities to play on national television, so to be practically the only football game on TV on a Friday night was a massive chance for exposure. Dickey understood the importance of having North Texas play on TV, as he realizes that it helps in a big way with recruiting. As Dickey said, they've been able to see us on TV and know that if they come here, they've got a chance to play on TV. Kids like that. They want to go somewhere where if they're doing something good, they get the opportunity for people to see it. That was the good news for Dickey and company. This game and the chance to keep this incredible Sunbelt streak of theirs alive was a massive recruiting opportunity and a massive chance for exposure. However, there was a downside to this. The game was at 9 o'clock on a Friday night, which is an incredibly awkward time. For one, Dickey had been with the team since 1998, and he had never been involved in a Friday night game. And 9 o'clock is a really late kickoff time. You're not seeing too many games start late enough where it's almost guaranteed that it'll be the next day by the time the game is over. Usually, when Dickey and his North Texas team played a late game, they would do the usual thing of flying the day before. But because of the unique circumstances of this game, Dickey had an incredibly bold idea that you never see teams do intentionally. What if we only landed in Lafayette right before kickoff? Now sometimes, teams have to fly down on the day of the game, but that's entirely out of necessity, and it has nothing to do with personal preference. Two years ago, over on the Jaguar Gator 9 channel, I did a video on a 2012 game between the New York Giants and the Pittsburgh Steelers, and how the Steelers had to fly into Newark the day of the game, landing just hours before kickoff, because there were no hotels for the team to stay at due to Hurricane Sandy displacing a ton of people in New Jersey. To learn more about that bizarre situation, click the card in the upper right corner. However, as I mentioned, that was not planned. Mike Tomlin did not want to do that. That was because of a natural disaster changing plans. What Coach Dickey was doing here for North Texas was 100% intentional, was 100% planned, and was 100% his call. That raises the obvious question. Just why the heck did he do this? Why did he mess up a winning formula by flying out the afternoon of the game when the team had not done this all year and had won 11 straight road games in Sunbell play to the point where current seniors on the team legitimately did not know the feeling of losing a road game in Sunbell play? Well, in Dickey's eyes, the 9 o'clock kickoff time scared him a lot, and he had no idea how the team was going to respond with all that extra time potentially messing up their plans. So what Dickey was going to do was as follows. He was going to have a team breakfast in Denon, followed by team meetings in Denon, followed by a team lunch in Denon. Only after lunch concluded would the team fly down to Lafayette, meaning that the team would be leaving Lafayette just as quickly as they'd be entering. As Dickey said, the thing that happens, and it happens with all night games, is kids at some point start bouncing off walls and getting a little stir-crazy. With those extra three hours, instead of a usual 6 o'clock start, we just felt it would be better to get up that morning, sleep in our own beds Thursday night, and have some breakfast and some meetings here. Now right off the bat, you might feel like there are quite a few problems with this strategy. Number one, there's the obvious fact that North Texas had never tried anything like this before, and in every other non-bowl game that they played in front of a national television audience, whether it be on ESPN or ESPN2, they've won. They had a strategy that worked and now they're changing things up. What's that old line about messing with a winning formula? Because it feels like that more than applies here. Number two, it's incredibly natural to feel tired after being on a plane. You've been sitting down for an extended period of time, which in the case of North Texas, would be somewhere in the ballpark of two hours when you factor time in the air and time spent on the runway with pre-flight things. Your body isn't used to being 30,000 feet in the air. Especially after a long day of two team meals and a bunch of meetings, you're going to be exhausted. And now, you're going to have to stay alert and be at full speed as you get ready to play a football game. Plus, this is an insanely long day with all those meetings, a game, and two flights. And some people physically cannot sleep on a plane. You're risking your players being extremely tired. Whereas if you got there the day before like you usually do, then they could maybe get a pregame nap in so that they're not running on empty by the second half. From a competitive standpoint, this strategy, though it had great intentions, seemed kind of crazy on paper. And then, there's a logistical standpoint, which I'm genuinely shocked that the Sunbell and ESPN allowed for this to happen. 
This was a nationally televised game, and the Sun Belt didn't exactly get too many of those opportunities. What happens if the plane breaks down? What happens if the weather stinks and you can't fly out? Now you're left with a team stuck at home. Sure, they could make the drive from Denon to Lafayette, but especially since part of that drive would be in rush hour traffic, you're looking at seven hours minimum between the two cities. This is not like a Moscow to Pullman situation, where the two cities are not even 15 minutes apart, to the point where you can watch this video from start to finish by starting in one city and finishing in the other. You can learn more about that bizarre situation by clicking the card in the upper right corner. If the weather was bad, then North Texas was completely screwed, and the Sun Belt's rare chance at exposure was gone. And it's not like this is Phoenix, where you can count on safe flying conditions 99.9% .9 of the time. In the last week and a half prior to this game, there was constant heavy rain in Denon, with not one, not two, not three, but four separate thunderstorms, where obviously, you're not able to fly. It's too unsafe. Flying on the day of the game is a massive gamble not just from a competitive standpoint, but from the perspective of being able to arrive in time. It is a giant gamble. Coach Dickey was doing something almost unheard of. This strategy was incredibly bold, and quite honestly, seemed incredibly stupid. And this was the same guy that earlier in the season against Texas decided beforehand that the best strategy to pulling off the upset was to alternate quarterbacks on every drive. So he's had a lot of crazy ideas. But this might have been the craziest one of them all. This plan seemed destined for failure. This plan seemed like the classic case of a coach overthinking things and trying to mess up a winning formula by reinventing the wheel. So naturally, on November 7, 2004, when the final whistle sounded, and with the country watching on ESPN2, North Texas won the game. Yep. North Texas kept their streak alive in Sunbelt play, extending it to a whopping 23 consecutive games. Now that they had a 5-0 record in conference play, it seemed all but certain after this performance that they would clinch their fourth straight conference title, and would earn yet another trip to the New Orleans Bowl. The Mean Green got off to a flying start, as within the first seven minutes of the game, they were already up 14-0. Not once did they ever relinquish the lead, as from the time Jamario Thomas scored from one yard out not even three minutes into the game, until the time the final whistle sounded, North Texas was in complete control. They outgained Louisiana Lafayette 210-78 in rushing yards. Whereas North Texas averaged roughly 4.5 yards per carry, Louisiana Lafayette only averaged 2.8. The defense, which was struggling for most of the season, played very well here, forcing Louisiana Lafayette to turn it over three times. Jamario Thomas had another incredible game, continuing maybe the greatest freshman season in school history and maybe the greatest freshman season in conference history, as he finished the night with 203 rushing yards on 5.6 yards per carry and two rushing touchdowns, with his 58-yard touchdown in the fourth quarter being, in essence, the game clincher. It was a great night for the North Texas football program, because winning on the road in a hostile environment in front of a national television audience always feels good, especially when those opportunities don't exactly come around too often. And I guess the lesson here is that it's only stupid if it doesn't work. By all accounts, Coach Dickey's decision to fly that afternoon and land in Lafayette just hours before kickoff seemed like a very bad idea in every sense of the word. Players would be tired, players would be somewhat thrown off having just gotten off of a plane, the day would be way too long, and from a logistical standpoint, North Texas ran the risk of forfeiting the game and losing a huge primetime slot for television exposure. However, as evidenced by the final result, there was definitely a method to his madness. Because on this day in 2004, North Texas flew high, both on and off the field. Get your official Jaguar Gator 9 merchandise by going to jg9shop.com, and be sure to like this video, ring the notification bell, and subscribe down below if you haven't already, as it helps the channel out a lot, and be sure to check out Twitch every Wednesday night at 9pm Eastern for your chance to play NFL Trivia and win cash prizes. Link in the description below. Also, special thanks to all of our Patreon supporters for helping out the channel. Your support is greatly appreciated. So you can become a patron and request future video topics in the description below.